Perlin noise is one of the most influential algorithms in computer graphics. Ken Perlin actually won an Academy Award for developing it. It's somewhat similar to value noise, something we covered in a previous video, but it tends to produce better looking results. You can use it to generate infinitely procedural terrain, or if you happen to have a PhD in shaders, you can use it to build realistic 3D scenes with mountains, trees, and clouds, like Inigo Quiles does in his Raymarched landscape shader. It's so widely used in game dev that Unity and Unreal have built-in math functions for it. Needless to say, Perlin Noise is a very useful technique to add to your shader toolkit. Let's jump straight into the algorithm. In order to create Perlin noise, we start by creating a grid of cells. For every corner on the grid cell, we construct a random vector. We can do this by making a noise function that takes in the point at the edge of each cell and returns a vec2 with x and y components. We also need to find the four vectors from the edge of each grid cell to the current pixel. Once we have these eight vectors, we can take the dot products of the two vectors corresponding to the four corners of each grid cell. For example, we can take the dot product of the top left random vector with the top left vector that points to the current pixel. We do the same operation for the other three corners. And finally, we can linearly interpolate between the four results to get the color for our current pixel. Now that you have an overarching view of the algorithm, let's take a look at the code. So as with all the shader tutorials, we're going to set up our UV coordinates, which go from 0 to 1 on the x-axis and 0 to 1 on the y-axis. And we're also going to set the color of this entire shader to be black. Now in this entire tutorial, we're just going to be changing the color variable here. So for example, if I were to change this from black to white, then you'll see that this entire screen gets turned to white. In order to set up our Perlin noise shader, we need to first set up our UV coordinates. And we can do so by uncommenting these lines of code. Essentially, what we're doing here is multiplying the UV coordinates by 4. So on the x-axis we'll go from 0 to 4 and same thing will happen on the y-axis. And we're going to need the grid ID and the grid UV coordinates which we can get by taking the floor and the fract of the UV coordinates. And if I save this you'll see that it goes from 0 to 1 on the x-axis 4 times and it goes from 0 to 1 on the y-axis 4 times. Obviously, as you go from the bottom left corner to the top right, uh, both the X and the Y values of the grid UV are going to turn to one, which is why it is going to look like yellow on the top right and black on the bottom left. Once we have our grid of cells, we can start by finding the corners of each grid. And we can do that like so. Just as a reference, the grid ID is going to be 00, 0 here, 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, 10, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, so on and so forth. So in order to get the corners of each grid, we can take the grid ID and add 00. 0. For example, for this grid, the bottom left corner is going to be right over here. The bottom right corner is going to, you're going to want to add 1 in the x direction, so it's going to go over here. The top left is going to be one in the y direction, and the top right is going to be one in both the x and the y direction. That's how we're getting the grid corners for each grid cell. And once we get each corner, we want to create a random gradient for each corner, and that's what I'm doing here. I've went over this function at the beginning of this video, but essentially it's taking the corner coordinates and it's going to give us a random vec2. And I've just sort of like played around with the numbers to give me something random here. And I think the best way to understand what it's doing is to visualize it. And here I'm going to do so by creating a SDF box. Now this function, you don't, you guys don't really have to think about this. I'm only doing this to help visualize it for you, what's going on under the hood. But when you're creating your Perlin noise function, you don't need to do any of this. So essentially I'm going to create an SDF box and I'm going to pass in the start and end coordinates of each line. We're going to want to do that for all four corners of each grid cell. So I'm going to save that and you'll see here that, you know, we've we've gotten some random gradients for each corner of the grid cell. Now here you're not going to see it because it's going to the top right, but every single corner has a gradient. So the next thing we want to do is get the vector from each pixel to the corner of each grid cell. I'm going to display the center pixel, right? I'm going to take a SDF circle and just display it at the center of each grid. And this is just to help with visualization purposes. You don't have to do this when you're doing the Perlin noise algorithm. Point is, we want to get from the bottom left to this pixel, 
the top left to this pixel, the top right to this pixel, and the top bottom right to this pixel. It turns out that there's actually a very easy way to do that. We take the current coordinates, which is stored in the grid UV, and we just subtract the bottom left, the bottom right, the top left, and the top right, and that will give us the distance from the current pixel, in this case the center pixel, to each corner. So the last step is to just take the dot product from the gradient, which we calculated all the way over here, with the distance from the pixel corresponding to each corner. So we take the dot product of the bottom left gradient with the distance from the pixel to the bottom left corner. And we do that for all four corners. We're going to want to mix the bottom left and the bottom right dot product using the grid UVX. Same for the top left and the top right. And then we also mix the bottom and the top based on grid UV Y. And that will give us the Perlin noise. Uh, I'm going to set the color to be the Perlin noise. And I'm going to add one just to make it a little bit brighter so it's easier to visualize. And I'm also going to redisplay the center of each circle as well as these lines. Just realize that when we are setting this, we're actually going to be overwriting um, the previous colors. So we want to also add these colors at the end. So if I were to save that, you'll see that we get our Perlin noise. One final thing is that you're seeing these grid-like patterns appear in Perlin noise, and that's because we're not smoothing our grid UVs. So before we sort of perform the linear interpolation, we can use a um, either a cubic or a quintic smooth step, and that just sort of smooths out the noise. So we can go to our random gradient function, which we've defined over here, and I'm going to uncomment these two lines, and essentially what we're doing is changing the gradient based on time. And if I were to save this, then you'll see that the gradients are changing, and along with it, so is the Perlin noise. And now, at this point, uh, there are a couple of other variations that you can use uh, of Perlin noise. One is called Billow noise, in which you just sort of take the absolute value of Perlin noise, and if I were to save this, it'll look something like this. And another variation of Perlin noise is called rigid noise, in which you sort of take the one minus absolute value and you get something like this. Essentially, these are variations of Perlin noise that you can use to generate different types of terrain. And yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of how Perlin noise works. If you've made it this far, I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.